This video is brought to you by Friday the 13th. Own the 8 movie collection on Blu-ray and digital. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be discussing what it would be like if Jason Voorhees was real. What monster could have done this? Jason is out there, there are dead bodies everywhere. Let's go skinny dipping. <laughs> the counselors weren't paying any attention. They were making love while that young boy drowned. For over 40 years, Jason Voorhees has been the face of the Friday the 13th franchise. That is to say, if his face wasn't hidden behind a hockey mask. Oh, my sweet innocent Jason. Of course, Jason didn't become a horror icon off the bat or off the machete in this case. Look what you did to him! <laughs> As Casey Becker learned the hard way in Scream, this franchise's original villain was Pamela Voorhees, Jason's mother. Listen, it was Jason. I saw that movie 20 goddamn times! Then you should know Jason's mother, Mrs. Voorhees was the original killer. Jason didn't show up until the sequel. Targeting the camp that allowed her son to drown. Mrs. Voorhees meets her end, but Jason subsequently emerges to finish what his mother started. Jason, mother is talking to you. Now fully grown, Jason takes center stage in part two, although he wouldn't don the mask until part three. We can take solace in knowing that Jason isn't real, but with every slasher villain, there's a grain of truth. Friday the 13th was loosely inspired by John Carpenter's Halloween. There are numerous parallels between Jason and Michael Myers, who was in turn partly inspired by a 12 to 13 year old boy that Carpenter saw at a mental institution. You've done your job well and mommy is pleased. Jason has also been compared to the likes of Leatherface, who was inspired by real life killer Ed Gein, AKA the Butcher of Plainfield. Even if you took out Jason's supernatural elements, there is some realism rooted in the character. So what would happen if Jason Voorhees was a real life slasher? Let's cut to it. Y you see what we did there? All right, bad Halloween humor. Let's go. Who are you? What are you doing? Out of roughly 161 victims that Jason has claimed, a majority of them seem to be teenagers. That's because Jason drowned while a couple of counselors were shacking up. The counselors weren't paying any attention. They were making love. Scholar Philip DeMauer called the original Friday the 13th a cautionary tale that succeeds in warning against the sexual impropriety even as it fetishizes violent transgression. With that in mind, if Jason were real, we'd advise against young adults having sex in his territory, especially in the great outdoors. You'll also want to steer clear of all the other mistakes characters frequently make in horror movies, such as drinking, doing drugs, or going skinny dipping. Jason is out there, there are dead bodies everywhere, let's go skinny dipping. <laughs> if you do any of that, you might as well put a target on your back. Unlike Michael Myers, who strikes on Halloween, Jason's heinous actions aren't limited to a specific date. The girl who survived that night at Camp Blood, that Friday the 13th. While the two movies primarily take place on Friday the 13th, part three picks up on Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th. The so-called final chapter continues the story well into Tuesday the 17th. Thus, it's not like you can simply avoid Jason one day out of the year. If he's after you, you'll have to sleep with one eye open for 365 days straight. Your best bet is to avoid Jason's usual stomping ground, Camp Crystal Lake. How much further to the lake? We would have been there already if some people didn't have to go to the bathroom every five minutes. After a couple of ill-advised attempts to reopen it, the camp was publicly condemned by law. Alas, that didn't stop Jeff and Sandra from trespassing. Hey, you guys, look at this. Since there's always going to be a foolish group of teenagers who are curious about the legend of Jason, blocking off the camp isn't enough. You're going to have to keep your people away from that place, Holt. It's condemned. Nuking the campsite off the face of the earth sounds tempting, but we doubt that would stop Jason. We'd suggest keeping the camp guarded by the military at all times, preventing anyone from getting in and anything from getting out. Then again, Jason isn't restricted to Camp Crystal Lake. The quiet little community of Jerk. Crystal Lake was shocked today with reports of a grisly mass murder scene. Eight corpses have been discovered in what is already being called the most 
brutal and heinous crime in local history. In part three, he expands his reign of terror to Higgins Haven, which is part of the town of Crystal Lake. You a dead meat slime bag. Since then, Jason has brought the mayhem to Manhattan, Elm Street, and outer space. You know it's only a matter of time until Hollywood makes Friday the 13th World Tour or Jason's Hawaiian vacation. I could live anywhere else. The nights are always so peaceful and quiet here. While Jason has seen the sights, summer camps do seem to be his favorite spots. For that reason, it would be a good idea to up the security at all campgrounds and hire competent counselors. Jason isn't the only one we need to watch out for, though. In Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, a loner named Roy Burns takes up Jason's mantle to avenge his son, Joey. Come on, Roy. <laughs> Get your hands dirty. Just as Roy was inspired by Jason, so was Mark Branch, a real-life horror movie fanatic who dressed up as Jason to kill college student Sharon Gregory. Everything in that room, except for his own small personal clothing, was of, of horror films and, and horror substance. It's chilling to think, but between fictional characters like Roy Burns and actual people like Mark Branch, anybody can wield a weapon and put on a hockey mask. On that note, would wearing a hockey mask be considered in poor taste if Jason was real? In any case, what separates Jason from copycat killers is that Mr. Voorhees is essentially immortal. Is there any way to stop this guy? It has been established that Jason possesses a fear of water. Since we've repeatedly seen him rise out of lakes unscathed, though, buying a boat wouldn't necessarily keep you safe. Tranquilizing Jason will buy you some time, but it's seemingly impossible to keep him down for good. He's been drowned, butchered by Tommy Jarvis with a machete, blown up by the FBI, blown up again by an android, incinerated in Earth 2's atmosphere, and literally dragged to hell thanks to an enchanted dagger. Yet, Jason always gets back up again. Not even Freddy Krueger could finish him off. And even if he did, we'd have to deal with Freddy next. Although taking Jason out is easier said than done, Freezing him could prove effective. In the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comics, Jason is frozen under Crystal Lake along with a Necromicon. In Jason X, he got cryogenically frozen for 445 years before his body was found in space. If we keep him frozen in a government facility surrounded by well-equipped guards, it just might be the final Friday for Jason. There is one other alternative, however. We rehabilitate Jason and integrate him back into society. Just hear us out. Ken Kersinger, who portrayed the character in Freddy vs. Jason, described Jason as a psycho savant who was obsessed with making his late mother happy. Jason X writer Todd Farmer believes that seeing people have sex triggers Jason, which makes sense seeing how those frisky teenagers were responsible for his drowning. What if we enlisted a psychiatrist to diagnose Jason and get to the root of his issues? While some like to write off Jason as the embodiment of evil, he has shown mercy towards animals and young children. If he's capable of empathy, maybe, just maybe, therapy could mold Jason into a functioning member of society. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. What would Jason do after he's been reformed? Well, his body can block off most of a hockey goal, and he already has the mask. If Jason used hockey as an outlet for his bottled up rage, we imagine that he could take his team all the way to the Stanley Cup. In the event that sports aren't the best fit for Jason, his immortality would also make him a strong candidate for stunt work. Jason goes to Hollywood does have a nice ring to it. Jason, ladies and gentlemen. This video is brought to you by Friday the 13th. Own the eight movie collection on Blu-ray and digital.